everyone, so we are here in Kalamazoo at the Park Trade Center and this is where a lot of artistic things go on. We're here in the glass blowing studio and today we are going to be meeting with two local people who work with glass and we're going to be taking cremated remains and making an art piece with them that you can set in your home and have setting out where you kind of know what it is, but everyone that visits you may not. But it's a way to utilize a small portion of your cremated remains, and we're using about a teaspoon for each of them today. So part of what we're gonna do today, if you guys remember, Devin is a apprentice, no, not an apprentice yet, you're school. going to school online. She helped me build the casket bookshelf in a few videos back, so, um, few years ago how many years ago uh, it'll be seven years in a few weeks ago or in a few weeks and um, Devin's boyfriend died and so we are doing some of his cremated remains into an orb today and you picked nope. which colors I picked purple and teal so we can pick up to two colors that we can do mixing in and um, so you'll see a couple different orbs being made today and the purple and teal one is going to be her boyfriend along with um, someone's grandpa that we're doing as well. So we're going to show as much of the process as we can and then the end results will be in a couple of days. The orbs will have to cool and be sanded a little bit on the bottom so they can set and then we'll have that final product. So Ekin and Josh from the company are here and they've rented the studio space for the day and they're starting to get out the colors for the different orbs that we're gonna be doing today and doing their setup. Um, more so today, we're going to just be filming them and I'll be relaying some information so they can just do their work. Kind of like on the funeral side, we go into work mode and they said sometimes if families come in and watch, they don't understand that we have to go into work mode and sometimes do things that maybe look a little more aggressive or abrasive than maybe you would view it um, from a family side. Um, so they said that it's sometimes been hard when families have been come in to view because they don't understand that you have to work with that cremated remains as if it's just another material that you're working with and totally get that on our side. Especially sometimes families want to stay for the whole burial at the cemetery. And it goes from the funeral to the burial where heavy machinery is brought in. It gets dirty, it gets loud. It's a function of the process. It's not as clean and pristine and serene as other parts of the process. Um, so I totally get that, what they say about that. So let's check out what they're doing. starting now to make Devin's boyfriend's orb and getting the glass that they're gonna dip it into the glass reservoir again and then lay in some of the glass and some of the cremated remains so we're gonna watch that happen. So Josh is getting out some molten glass from the section that holds the molten glass. It's about 2,000 degrees in there. He cools down the pipe and then brings it over to start mixing into the colored glass and the cremated remains.
So this is the reheating chamber. It's about 2200 degrees. And that's where every time you pull that glass out into the air, it starts instantly cool. So you have to keep reheating it to get it to expand and move and do what they want to do with it. So as you had seen Josh clip off the tip of the Orbis, he was working with it, it does contain cremated remains in it. Um, it's not safe to send that portion home. So if you want to keep that extra portion, send it home, it's not safe to do because it hasn't gone through the full process. It is discarded at that point. So yes, you do lose a little bit of cremated remains along the process to do things like this with the curtain that we The first orb we did for somebody else was did orange colored glass. So everything looks orange. So watching it this time, everything is still pretty orange because of the heat that is used with a glass. So it'll be interesting to see the colors come through when it cools later and when it's completely done with the process. Because it's kind of a mystery that you can't really tell what it is. Um, Josh was saying, someone, someone asked him at one point, why is everything you make always orange? but it's just because the glass is so hot that it all appears orange until it cools down and all those colors come through. We are now starting a new orb um, with a new deceased, a new set of cremated remains. Um, this one we're gonna be creating a couple different orbs out of one set of cremated remains. As you can see in that last one though, you use very little cremated remains. They request one teaspoon but they only use probably even a half of that if that and then you can have the remainder back but he is going in to dip to get the glass to start making the next orb
So they keep going back and forth from the table here where they work the glass to the reheating chamber or the glory hole, um, learning, the, learning the terms, and continually are going back and forth making sure the shape is exactly how they want it as they are creating the orb. So with this orb, Josh has done a different technique where you take the tip out, swirl it inside to create a different visual, but also that you're not cutting off as much of it when you're creating it, which means less of that cremated remains is lost along the way. Uh, super cool technique on this one, so I can't wait to see the differences when they're completed. So some main questions you might have is how much cremated remains is used. And like I said, a teaspoon is what we start with and they don't even use maybe half of that. Then the process that we have gone through here is I have let them know I have some cremated remains in an order. They then get their studio time set up and this local, since they're local to me, um, I offered to bring over the cremated remains. They said they would, you know, pick them up from the funeral home and then bring back the finished product from, to the funeral home when done. So today after these pieces are done, they're going to have to stay here to cool for at least a day, get sanded on the bottom so that they sit flat and then they will be ready for me in a day or so um, to come get and deliver to the families. So it's just a short process, a few days, um, once we have done this part of it. Some companies that if you don't have anybody local, you may have to send your cremated remains in the mail to them and then they will send back your glass piece. So just check into the authenticity of the business you're using. If you're sending them out, look up reviews, check with local funeral homes so that you know who is reputable and who is not. Cost is going to vary depending on the shape of the item you want and on the company you use. The funeral home can set their own pricing if they're working as that kind of in between. The companies can set their own pricing, so it can vary depending on the company. So you'll have to ask them directly on cost. Inside of here is that finished product. So this is an oven that will gradually decrease in temperature. If you take such a hot object and cool it down too quickly, it's going to explode, crack, break, any of the above. And so this will gradually decrease the temperature over the course of hours to bring it down 
to a moderate temperature to be able to work with to sand it off tomorrow. So it is a long process because of that, that you have to take such a hot object and cool it down perfectly so you get that end result. So to give a little bit different options, we've done three different techniques with three of them that will show you those end results um, where you can just shape the glass a little bit differently and your swirls are gonna be different. The end unit is all the same shape essentially, but that inside pattern is gonna be a little different. So on this one, Josh, Kind of pushed in on the end to create a more of a divot and then it's reabsorbing itself in there it's super cool to watch happen um and the mystery of the colors is still fun because they're all just super orange <laughs> so you cannot tell the colors at all right now so i feel like it's going to be a huge reveal when you do get that end result piece because you're never going to know what it looks like until that moment We're finishing up here at the glass studio and gonna see our final product in two days. So excited to see what these orbs look like when they're done. Thank you to everybody here to the studio for letting us come in a video and to the families for allowing us to share their cremated remains of their loved ones on video so you can all see the process. So I'm going upstairs, they're delivering the orbs right now that we made from the glass company. So I'm super excited to see what they look like. So we'll do a little unveiling. Okay, they are beautiful. I am going to take um, the one to Devin because Devin is working today with me. And so I'm gonna take the one to her to give to her. So wanted to show you a little about the orbs that we got back. How pretty is that? Um, Josh did three different techniques when he was doing these. Um, we showed in the video, but wanted to show you kind of the final result. So the one where the tip is cut off a little bit and then spun out was this style. How cool is that? The second, he took that end and spun it back in on itself, and that is this one. It's kind of like a slide going back in the middle and creates all of these loop-de-loos in the side. So cool, right? So pretty. I can't wait to see these with maybe like a light. You know, you can get those little display lights they sit on and go up into. And then the last one, is this one. I love the black. Do you see, you can see through the whole thing, the kind of funnel shape in it. There's a good, you can see the funnel. So cool. So he pressed at the end and pressed straight into it with his tool 
and created kind of this air bubble that he says will capture the light and refract it really cool up and in it and then I love that it has almost like a tornado effect on the inside so those are the three different styles of orbs and it was cool that he could show with one set of cremated remains the different styles that you can do I mean these air bubbles that get caught can you see those two right there those little air bubbles they're just so cool so love seeing this end result and we had said that they were going to be sanded so he they did sand the base so that it is flat to be able to sit so that is a little about the three different style orbs and what we got from our glass experience so thanks for joining me uh comment below have you ever done one of these with your cremated remains what do you think about it thanks guys